Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Mike Cobb's Offshore Investment Report, a great topic today, all centering around this report that just came out, the great American exodus, folks. People, people are leaving the U.S. and moving offshore. Nobody is a greater expert on why and what is happening than the offshore investment oracle, Mike Cobb. Mike, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Great question, Carter. Uh, it, it is uh, it is something that we're seeing a lot more people pay attention to, and look, people are people are worried, people are concerned, and and the people who were Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, we learned. I was a Boy Scout, as you know, not a Girl Scout, but I was a Boy Scout. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Although now it's just scouting, apparently. But anyway. Yes. Uh -huh. Be prepared. Be prepared. The motto. This is this is so fundamentally part of my makeup. And for many people who went through scouting or, or other organizations, I mean, there are many other organizations that, that carry a similar type of motto for age, right? Is all about being prepared. You know, it's the yes. agricultural, you know, type of thing that that talks about how we can be self-sustaining with food and agriculture. So there are many organizations that helped many of us understand the need to be prepared. And that became part of our psyche, became part of our, you know, our, our being, right? Our culture. And so what we're seeing now is people are recognizing the instability, both political, social. People are seeing this. It's visceral. It's in our faces. And people are saying to themselves, wow, I need a plan B. I need to be prepared in case yes. something else, you know, transacts, right? If, if things get worse. And so, you know, we've done a great job over the years of helping people with plan Bs south of the border, whether it was Belize, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, even countries that we don't have developments in. You know, we've referred people there because, look, the plan B for me is different than the plan B for you, but everybody should have a plan B. And the yes. plan B needs to be right for them. Well, we were just in the Azores. In fact, I filmed a, a program there with Joel last week on his program. Yeah. And we were in the Azores together. We had closed on a beautiful manor house that was started in 1687, finished in 1850. It is a spectacular property. It's an operating bed and breakfast called Solar de la Lem. Check it out, Carter. This is this is a beautiful, it's beautiful property. And, and what it has done for our ability to provide more and broader services is to provide a European plan B, a EU residency that leads to citizenship. This is incredible. And, and so, again, this, this idea that not everybody wants Latin America. I like Latin America. I'm very comfortable there. Right, I, yeah. I really like it. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who would say, I would never have my plan B in Latin America. I want my plan B in, in, you know, in Europe, for example. In Europe. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden we're going to be able to help people with that plan B uh, with people looking for a European residency and citizenship. So, yeah, this is this yeah, is that's exciting. essentially what this article focuses on, by the way, that golden yes. visa. It's a golden visa. Yep. Um, get golden dot com. And they focus on Europe and specifically Portugal. Correct. And as you say, you and 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 Joel did a great show on Joel's um Global Wealth Fortress Report, which folks, you can go to offshore.club and just click on it and watch it. It was yeah, up you, this past Thursday. It's a great show. You please, and Joel and, and the couple that you bought the uh, the yeah. entire villa from. One, wonderful people. Yeah. Idle, light or whatever. Right. So, and and, yeah. and maybe Gary could throw up the, 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 the link so that people can go to that episode of, you know, the offshore.club Global Fortress. Because if you... If you are watching this and you are interested in a European residency, yes, that that particular video with Joel is is a great one because we talk about the golden Wonderful. visa. We can talk about it here too, Carter. I don't know what where we're going with this today, but I'm happy to go any direction that that you think we should take it. But this is this is critically important. Critically, it's, important. it's critically important. And I want to I want to get into the ten reasons why people are leaving, or, or several of the ten, not all ten, but a couple of them. And you've already addressed one. Uh, but before we do, let's re remind the folks that the new residential resort community you're building in the Azores is only four hours from the U.S. A lot of times, you know, you say Portugal 
and you think yeah. the other side of the world. It's a four-hour flight. Yep. It is a four-hour flight to get to this new. It'll be a, what a year and a half or so when, when you have people to be able to start. Well, now they can go to the bed and breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So from from Newark. Sorry, I was thinking Boston because the flights from Boston on SATA Airlines is the Azorian Airlines. Those were the right. flights and those those have been going on forever. But United yeah. just opened their flight to the Azores from uh, Newark. And it's a great flight. It, it is. It's about four and a half hours there. It's That's about it. five hours back, depending on the headwinds, tailwinds, headwinds, one way or the other. But you're right, Carter. It's so much easier than flying all the way to Portugal, which is a you know six and a half, seven hour flight. So Four and a half hours, you know, four, four and a half hours, whatever it is, you're you're landed in the Azores, which is Portugal, right? Which is owned by Portugal. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the truth of the matter is, there it, it is when in terms of the flight, it's as close as the countries in Central America. Yes. I mean, the world really literally is just getting smaller. There's just no doubt about it. Carter, yeah. from Newark, from Newark to Panama is a four hour flight. From Newark to the Azores is a four and a half hour flight. Exactly. It's fantastic. almost exactly the same time frame. Yep. Yep. And the and the cost of living, oh. uh, I think, is almost as low in for those who prefer Europe in the Azores as in some of these Central American countries in South America. I would I would actually say that the cost of living in Panama, which is one of the higher Central American countries, right. you know, it's much more Americanized. The cost of living in Panama and the cost of living in the Azores is probably about the same, Carter, which is pretty incredible, actually. It's incredible. Yeah. It is yeah. incredible. And and it's gorgeous. And we urge people, go to Offshore.club and yep. wa watch that, that the interview on Joel Nagel's Global Wealth Fortress Report. That is, It's there now because it was just put up, there you go, this past uh, Holy Thursday. Holy smokes. That, that's quite the a link. Ran. All right. You better hold, keep that up so people can write. <laughs> or, just, or just go to offshore.club and look up Global Wealth Fortress. That, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you'll get it. But one, let, let's talk. One of, one of the 10 reasons that uh, this, this great article gave. But first of all, let me, let me read something. Go back to something you said right at the outset. This is in the intro to the article, okay? It seems that American society is now more divided than ever here we go. The two leading parties have succeeded in building trenches while burning all bridges. Yeah. It's where we are. The yeah. turmoil. The turmoil. The turmoil is just how you can cut it with a knife now. You can cut yep. it with a knife, unfortunately. And folks, you're not going to find that in the Azores. You're not going to find it in the Central American countries. It's just Correct. not there, the divisiveness. Uh, it. So, so, But let's talk about, you know, we don't want to get real political. And I, except I do want to say this. Please, folks, do not think that the Republicans are going to rescue you from this divisiveness. They are part and parcel. It's what politicians do. They divide to conquer. I was, as Mike knows, I was a top Washington political operative for 40 years. I worked with these people, other than Ronald Reagan, uh, the, the great senator who died from, uh, from Georgia, Paul Coverdale. Very few of them are, do anything but divide and conquer. That's just that's just the way it is. So that that's oh, a great observation. This right. article, but you and mentioned the to, high. Go and ahead. We have to take care of ourselves. That that's the reality. We can't depend upon anyone, Republican, Democrat, government, private sector. We can't depend upon anyone to take care of us. We have to that's take it. care of ourselves. And and look, I I know that kind of flies in the face of community. And and I do believe that community is important. And I do believe in taking care of other people because we do. We we love one another and we take care of one another. Yeah. And that's part of being part of the human community. But at the same time, when all chips are down, there's really only one person you can count on to take care of yourself, and that's you. And that's and you. obviously family, family's a much tighter little net, you know, bracket as well. So so yourself and your family and maybe your very, very best friends. But but outside of that, we have to count. We can't count on anyone else. We have to count no. on ourselves. And and so that's really the, the fundamental issue here, Carter, is you know, how do we do that? How do we take care of ourselves in the face of this divisiveness, social unrest, political unrest, high inflation when now we're seeing it? I mean, obviously, oh, my God, what, are the, what about the nonsense? Oh, this is I can't remember the transitionary inflation or whatever the nonsense. <laughs> they were Transitory. About. 
transitory. Transitory, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a, just silly. Anyone... 6%. They said it was transitory. Yeah. Uh, excuse right. me. It, it, exactly. You know, I'm off to speak at Freedom Fest next week, actually. It's uh, Mark Skousen's event. He's had it for 25, 26 years. It's a tremendous event. It's all about monetary theory, Austrian economics, uh, libertarian and freedom. That That's really the foundation of his conference. Yeah. But but the folks that have been going to that for 25 years, we, we've all just been kind of scratching our heads saying, well, where is this inflation? Because you, you can't print money without inflation. And, and, and interestingly, Carter, this is, this is my theory. My theory is that, well, some of it we, we know went into the real estate market. Some of it went into the stock markets. Those are bubbles, right? So, so the money kind of went there, but a lot of it went offshore. The United States, this is, this is incredible. And this is something for us to remember for many people around the world, the United States is their plan B. The yeah. United States is the safe haven for people in citizens of other countries where the instability, Venezuela is a great example, right? Or Argentina that's racked by economics, ups and downs and, and countries around the world. People look at the United States as their safe haven. Cubans, Cubans said, holy smokes, I got to get the heck out of here, right? They fled to Miami, fled to Florida, wherever. So, so you have this safe haven concept and the United States is a safe haven for many countries. But, but if you're a citizen of U.S., then the U.S. might or might not be your safe haven, but you still need a plan B, right? But this monetary issue, people fled to the dollar. So people stockpiled dollars around the world. The U.S. dollar against the euro, I was just in, in the Azores, against the euro is like 103, 104. I don't know what it is today, but but it used to be, you know, one, 115, 120. So the dollar is getting stronger because people are coming to it. This is a great time, and, and 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 I didn't think about the segue here, but this is a great time to get your plan B in Europe because basically the dollar and the euro are at parity, and and so it's a twenty percent discount over what it would have been a year ago or two years ago. So again, we can use this time of opportunity to make a strategic purchase of a of a of a villa, right? Of a, of, of a piece of a villa in the Azores, obtain our plan B, obtain our EU residency have it lead to citizenship over five years, and we can do it for a 20% discount right now. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And and right now, and again, it's not going to last, folks. The dollar is very strong against the currencies throughout Central and South America. I right. think right now the dollar is 24 to 1 on the um, Lampira in Honduras. Usually it hovers around 20, but that's not going to last. You, you right. may have noticed the, the BRIC nations. Let, let's just very briefly, the BRIC nations, uh, they had a meeting while, while the G7 sat there and mumbled to each other. Putin <laughs> and India and Brazil and South Africa and China got together and on the BRIC, with the BRIC nations saying, OK, OK, now we're going after the reserve currency, the dollar. And these are very smart people and they're going to succeed. And the only thing propping the dollar up is the fact that it is the reserve currency. By the way, the other country there for the first time, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah, Carter. I, I look, yeah. it, it, it's just a reality. It, it might. I know I know a lot of people watching this go, oh, that's horrible. And, you know, and, and maybe it is horrible, but but horrible or not horrible. It's a reality. This is the reality. And we can stick our head in the sand and we yeah. can ignore this reality. Or we can observe this reality and make decisions based on what this could mean for us is likely to mean for us. Yeah. Right. Let's yeah. do it. Let's let's again, yeah. let's take charge of our future and make the decisions that protect us, even if we don't like what's happening. Right. Foreign. Right? We don't like yeah. A lot of us don't like what's happening domestically, but we don't like what's happening on a foreign basis. The BRICs getting together and talking about paying in rubles or whatever it is and, you know, and, and euros and all these other currencies. You know, we're not going to like that as the reserve currency, as a U.S. person. If we're if we're looking at it from a U.S. perspective, we go, that stinks. I mean, it's horrible. Well, you know, we need to stop that. Well, good luck. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know how you stop, stop that, right? But you can be upset, but being yeah. upset and doing something about it are two totally different things. Absolutely. And if you're going to invest, this is the offshore investment report. You're the, you're the offshore investment worker. Let's, let's suggest to people, if you're going to invest dollars, I have two pictures to show you as to where you might want to invest. Here you go. I can get you this home in Baltimore for mm -hmm. only $199,000. Folks, notice the little signs in the windows. 
those are signs that say things like condemned, right? So, and I happen to know that street. If you buy that home for one hundred and ninety nine thousand, make sure to set aside another three or four thousand a month for security because you won't be able to go out the door or Mike for the coincidentally for about the same price. You can buy this ocean side home in Grand Pacific <laughs> in Nicaragua, a Mike yeah. Cobb community for very nearly the same price. Yeah, Carter, it's correct. It's correct. <laughs> it's correct. I mean, <laughs> you know, yep. One of their 10 reasons, number five is yeah. high living expenses. If you live here in Baltimore, 40% of every dollar you have is going to taxes. There are 10 to 11 percent property taxes for that, folks, for that. OK. Property taxes on this one. <laughs> yep. Next to next to nothing. Correct. Point eight percent, Carter. Point eight percent. That's the property tax. Point eight percent. As opposed to about 12 in Baltimore to get yeah. shot in the head when you walk out the door. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward Grand Pacific myself. Thanks, Carter. I, I, I lean there myself, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it really is a sad state of affairs that we find ourselves in, that, that, that articles like the one you forwarded to me that we're talking about today, that, yeah. that we're, even, we're even really paying a lot of attention to that and that we're sensing a real need. There's an urgency to move very quickly and in this direction to prepare that plan B, to acquire it, to have it. This is this is a very sad state of affairs, but sad or yeah. not, it's the reality that we find ourselves in. And again, we can put our head in the sand and forget about it, or we can do something about it and really protect the things that we care most about, which is ourselves and our family. And we need to be doing that. And, and a lot of folks are, by the way, and a lot of folks are, we've literally helped over a thousand folks obtain a plan B offshore, Panama, Belize, Nicaragua. Uh, th th these are, these are all countries that we've, we've worked in. And now with the Azores, Portugal, being able to help people there too. But, but we've served over a thousand folks who were looking for that plan B and we helped them to acquire it. We helped them to put that, that peace of mind in their, in their back pocket and, and be able to sleep really well at night, knowing that if things continue in a bad trajectory, they have a place that they can go. They have a way out. And that's important. That's really important. Yeah, which is which is really what what the offshore club is all about. And really what I know you're all about. Folks, check out this, this. I always keep my papers everywhere around me here. This oh, yeah. goes into what Mike is saying here, folks. That's free. That's free at ecidevelopment.com. That's, yep. That is almost 100 pages, around 100 pages that lay out for you exactly what to look for as you yeah. become one of these participants in the great American exodus. Yeah. You know, it, 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 Mike, and, you say, you know, you say, look, we don't have to like it, but you have to be prepared. I often I always think of Billy Joel's song. We didn't start the fire. Right. We didn't start the fire. Correct. But, that didn't, but we don't have to sit around getting burned in it. Yeah, no, we don't. Ash. And. And Carter, uh, thanks for bringing up the Consumer Resource Guide. And, and I see we got the scrolling. The best way to get a copy of that is to absolutely send an email to offshoreclub at ecidevelopment.com and write Consumer Guide in the subject line. We will send you a copy of that immediately. It, it Carter, you've read it. It's, no. it's priceless. It is truly it's priceless, priceless uh, for folks looking to make an offshore investment. We don't know what we don't know. And this document helps us really do far better due diligence than we could ever do on our own. And, and if you're preparing for a plan B, if this is part of why you're watching this, then you need a copy of the consumer guide. So send an email and, and get a copy. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's absolutely free. Right. Downloadable, full color, fact field, yep. the works. Yep. Okay. We're almost out of time here, but let's touch on one other item. His, his number nine in, in this report is work and life balance. Yeah. Work and life balance. And and that goes back to the, to the, the term you coined, the the remote revolution yeah. down in these countries. Now, you can live a much better lifestyle remotely because Correct. of the remote. You, you, you share your thoughts on us about that. Yeah, we, we've seen an incredible uptake of folks looking for this remote lifestyle. Digital nomads, that seems to be the word that people are throwing around these days. Remote revolution is 
is really the fundamental aspect of driving yeah. it. People can live overseas. They can live anywhere. It doesn't have to be Latin America, but let's talk about Latin America. People can live in Latin America for far less than it costs to live in the United States or Canada. They can enjoy a higher quality of life. Now, this is somewhat paradoxical, and I don't have a copy of my Mobius strip, but if you've ever seen the Mobius strip, we've referred to it. You take a piece of paper, cut it into a strip, twist one end, and staple or tape, staple or tape the two ends together, and you have a piece of paper that's one-sided, and people just don't understand that. They're like, no way, paper has two sides. But if you just simply take a strip of paper, do a half twist, and tape or staple it, you will, and trace your finger on it, you will see this paper now only has one side. That's it. Paradoxical, right? Paradoxical. So the same idea of how can we have a higher quality of life that costs less? Because in the U.S., if we want a higher quality of life, we have to spend more generally. If we want to eat organic fruits and vegetables, if we want to eat free-range grass-fed meats and cheeses and all those kinds of things, we have to spend a lot more money to buy that stuff. If we yep. want to eat out at fine restaurants, they cost a lot of money. So when you move to Latin America, you actually spend a lot less because the organic fruits and vegetables, free range, all of that stuff is very inexpensive. It's the box of Cheerios and ragu spaghetti sauce that cost a fortune at the supermarket, right? So, so it's a very- yes, don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, right. So all of a sudden, all the stuff that's really expensive from a food standpoint and healthier, much healthier, of course, is a lot less money uh, eating out at fine restaurants. Again, very, very inexpensive. Just in the Azores, we, we went to this wonderful top-notch restaurant outside of uh, Riviera Grande, which is uh, one of the little towns on the island. Oh, it's a small city on the island. This agricultural co-op, we go there every time. The food is phenomenal. Giant steaks, giant seafood dishes, two pieces of tuna that were probably 12 to 14 ounces. They weren't quite a pound, but I think it was a pound and a half of tuna came with salad, French fries, vegetables, you know, blah, 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 was 17 euros. In the U.S. for that kind of a, a, a you know, a, a tuna dinner would be, I don't know, three times that number, right? Oh, 40, easily, easily. 40, 50 bucks. So, so again, and this is a very nice restaurant. You can actually go down and buy the tuna at the fish shop for two to three dollars a pound. I think it was six dollars a kilo. Yeah, like that's two fifty a pound or something for, right. for beautiful right. fresh tuna right out of the ocean. So, so again, we don't understand how this is possible, but but it, for people who have experienced it, it is possible a higher quality of life for a lower cost of living. So now you're a remote worker. The woman who is my executive assistant is from Atlanta, Georgia. Has lived in Atlanta, Georgia for whatever many years. She is now in Costa Rica testing out this concept, and she's going to go to Nicaragua. She's going to test out this concept of working for us, working for me, right, as my executive assistant. She's going to be working from Costa Rica or Nicaragua. She is part of this remote revolution. Why wouldn't she take herself and her young son to Costa Rica? Great schooling, great quality of life, where, where the dollars stretch a lot further and the quality of life is higher. Because she can do that. She is down there. She's been down there a week and a half, two weeks now, testing out Costa Rica for a month. Fantastic. Like, it works. It's, it's already fantastic. working. Fantastic. So, Carter, for and and the other element, it's not just the young people. Think about the person who's always dreamed, imagined this incredible retirement lifestyle in Honduras or or Belize or Costa Rica, wherever it might be. And they think, well, I got to get to 65 or 70 when I retire, and then I'm going to go have this incredible quality of life. Well, Guess what? If you can work remotely, you don't have to wait till you retire. You That's can right. actually move now, enjoy the quality of life, the evenings, the weekends, whatever it is, and then retire when you retire, but you're already there. You're so there. You begin this lifestyle far in advance of retirement. <laughs> Um, that's, that's my little puppy wanting. Amen. Out. I think he's saying amen. Amen. He's saying, I, amen. I he's saying, hey, you've been on this thing too long. I got you. Got to let me out. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, well, Carter. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show you the. There. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's that's the, that's the one that wants to get out of here. So he's ready to go, Mike. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Excellent. It has. Excellent. Exactly what we needed to hear. You laid it out for us. You amplified the report. There you go, yep. folks. Amplified. Let me get it right. The report. And folks, now's the time to make that move. Mike, thank you.
Thanks, Carter. Excellent. Good to be Excellent. with you. All right, folks, there you have it. So there's your choice. We finished up on, on, on remote, the remote revolution, the coin that Mike term, the offshore investment oracle. So here's your choice. You can work remotely. You don't have to go to the office. You can work remotely from there. Matter of fact, you better stay inside and work remotely if you buy that one for 200000 Or you can go to Grand Pacifica, same price, maybe even a little less, and work remotely from there, and which is a matter of steps from the beach. So there you go, folks. As we say in every edition, every episode, let's do this thing.